Hey everybody, welcome to Muse by Muse. We are back for a great series that is coming out on National Geographic called Secrets of the Elephants. Uh, we're here with Paula Kahumbu, who is the CEO of Wildlife Direct. She's a part of the series, was an advisor in the series as well. Paula, how exciting is it that this series is finally going to come out and this the real the the tale of these elephants are going to be able to be seen and appreciated by a lot of people? Well, I'm I'm so excited. It's almost unbelievable that the film and the whole series is about to come out. It's taken um, more than a year to produce the series. And it's so hard to know when you're in the field and you're filming, it's so hard to know how it's all going to come together. And is it really going to be a story that people will want to watch? Uh, are there are the elements going to really work together? And and even when you're in the field, sometimes, you know, things just don't happen the way you want them to happen. But this story is so important. And the elephants, all the different kinds of elephants and the different locations that we have ele elephants, um, these are things that matter, not just today, but for the future. So I'm so excited. I'm I'm scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite jittery about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing what people think about it. Yeah, because when I first saw it at TCA in uh, January or first week of February, I was just blown away on how visually stunning it is, and to be able to get your cam get cameras that close and get that footage was just com it completely blew me away. Um, how do you think that relates to telling the story and then the vis the visuals and get being able to have that close of close mm -hmm. of access and have lenses where you could really get really tight into the environment and be able to see what elephants are doing you know the the composition of the series is actually very special and quite unique and that's thanks to an incredible crew or crews because there are different crews for each of those different locations they were different crews um, but there's one particular person who played a major role in creating the whole visual aesthetic. And his name is Toby Strong. And I spoke to Toby about this because it is true. Even when I watch, I'm like, wow, when I was with you in the desert, I didn't really feel it the way I see it now. I feel like I'm you know, right next to that elephant. Mm -hmm. And um, two things. One, every crew spent a lot of time getting to know those elephants and spend a lot of time with them so that the elephants were very comfortable around them. And secondly, uh, you know, taking cues from the environment, the colors, the, the, I guess the geography of those landscapes, you know, go to the deserts, it's big wide open spaces and that's how it was filmed. And then you go to the forests and it's tight, dark green close-ups because you get this feel like you're almost like you're in tunnels with those elephants, you know, bashing through the forest. So it was it was uh, created intentionally to give you a feeling like you're in that environment with those elephants. That's what I think is the genius of the series. Many people have told me exactly what you just said. It feels like you're right there with them. And and um, and I think the soundscape brings you into a, you almost from the sound alone. You feel like you're there. You can feel the sound of their trunk as it grazes on the soil. It's, yeah, very, very um, professional work. I'm I'm blown away by the people we've been working with. It's a masterpiece, really. Yeah, and I wanted to take a, uh, for our next couple of questions, take an episode, and one is the desert, because I think that was the most fascinating to see the how animals, how the elephants are looking for food and water, and they have to travel. There's no time to stop and rest to be able they're constantly in the move looking for food or water due to the the climate and the way the environment has been uh, telling that storyline and being able to really enforce especially now with global warming we're seeing especially here in LA we've had a weird weather and weird rainstorms that people say oh well it's just rain no there's a purpose to this you, you this is what our effect is here in this location when you see this show, you see the effect where those elephants are in the desert. How important was it to show how those effects are on the elephants and their migration patterns and everything that's going on in the area? You know, the elephants have lived in deserts for a very long time, but now 
things of getting very critical. In fact, the number of elephants in that particular desert, in the Namib Desert, have declined to 150 individuals. That is literally equivalent to just a few families. The, the population is on the brink of blinking out mm -hmm. because of how extreme the environment has become. And that is due to global climate change. Mm -hmm. That climate change is such an important part of the story because it's not due to anything anybody did in Namibia. Mm -hmm. It's due to what's happening on a global level. The Namibians have done whatever Namibians have always done. They have a tiny carbon footprint, tiny, minuscule, probably irrelevant. Uh, but whatever's happening in other parts of the world is altering the climate in that desert and making it so much drier that the elephants can't make it to the critical places. And if they get to a water hole, they might find that it's dry. There's no water when there's, or there's no food. It's really important that we do understand that what we're doing anywhere in the world has mm. impact somewhere else. And it's hard to imagine that somebody sitting in California could be responsible for the death of an elephant in Namibia. Mm -hmm. It's a, I think it's a painful reality that we all have to get present to, that we all have a part to play in what's happening when it comes to climate change. Yeah, and I agree, because I don't think people realize how small our world it really is. They think of it being huge and that how could something that we do here affect someplace somewhere else? And it's a real, our small, our world is small and it's all connect, interconnected. And I wish people would see that more. And I hope watching this show, they get to feel that as well, especially as you see the elephants and their families and how they interact with each other and how the, I hope it kind of touches a, a somebody who's human, who could oh. see that, who does that in their daily basis and relate in some way, because I love those shots. Th those are some of the most fascinating shots to me because um, mm -hmm. seeing that family aspect within the elephants. How you know, I, I just gonna say that, you know, I think what's so moving about what's happening to those elephants is that those elephants can't do anything about it. You know, mm -hmm. humans can build a house or put in a water tank. Mm -hmm. The elephants are literally um, at the effect of the environment they can't change anything and they can't speak for themselves um they have no voice they that's that's what makes it even more pitiful maybe or or uh you know we should be we should be even more sensitive to it because it's not just humans who do have some choices or have a voice to say hey this is happening to me the elephants don't have that and it's just we're lucky these are the largest mammals on land we can see them. What about the beetles and all these other small animals? We're not even seeing what we're doing to them. Yeah, exactly. Especially like here, bees are like where where it's being affected uh, a lot. We don't we see the number of bees being starting to drop, and you could just it's all related. And I wish more people would see that. And hopefully, this show does because I think showing the family aspect of the of the elephant showing how they are especially with the birth of a new elephant and how protective they are in order to and how they circle a baby hopefully it kind of shows mm -hmm. more people and it really relates to them a lot more yeah 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 but um we're gonna have to wrap it up uh really soon but i just wanted to say thank you uh wish we had more time to talk a little bit more about this but uh Thank you so much, Paula, for stopping with us. I think this is a fascinating show. It's one of National Geographic's best. And I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, throughout the season. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your questions. And I look forward to, to reading your, um, is, it, is it an article or it's a podcast? It's, it's, a, uh, it's going to be a video for our network uh, as okay. well as our YouTube channel. And we'll put it into the website as well. So you'll be having, you'll be able to see the video very soon. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank right. you so much for, for your um, attention to this. I really appreciate it. No problem. I love it. Thank you so much, Paul.